What's going on, Mr. Rap Nerd? Excuse the voice, my sinuses and allergies are kicking my ass, but let's talk about this Doom Part 2 trailer. This is not going to be a reaction to me screaming and going nuts like some people do. I don't do that for copyright reasons, and I don't feel like I express myself that way, but let's just talk about this trailer. Holy moly. If you've ever heard me talk about Doom, you will know that I loved the first one. Doom Part 1, to, is to, for me, is my type of sci-fi film. It has a mythos to it. It's dramatic. It's, it's seriously toned. It, it's beautifully shot. The scale is there. Blah, blah, blah. This is my type of shit. Part 2 looks like it's going to blow Part 1 out of the water. And I heard Denny say that. Like, you know, now I can do the fun stuff and, you know, you know all of that great stuff. I, I know the action is going to be at a higher level. But from what I just saw in that two minute and 44 second trailer, this possibly, for me, and I don't want to jump the gun for everyone else, but the, but, the, but the best space odyssey ever put on film. Like, that's how I feel about it. That's how that made me feel. Just seeing what... I don't know how you get better in so many ways from the first one in just a two minute clip. Like I can already tell we're gonna get something different. You know, it starts with Paul and I forgot Zendaya's character name, but them talking and him, him expressing what water is to her and it's just, and you get this big scale shot of them being across the sand dunes and oh, this, this you kind of hear the score start to come in there a little bit and yeah, even with the score, when it comes in, there's like an extra drum pattern on it that kicks up a notch when Paul starts riding on on the back of the uh, the sandworm. And even the way that's shot, I can just tell this is was like this is one you're gonna have to see in theaters. This is one that you're gonna see need to see in IMAX because Doom Part One. That's maybe why it means so much to me. It is one of the best theater experiences I've ever had. I went to an IMAX screening and just being in there and seeing the, the entire frame for what it is and seeing Denise's capabilities of capturing the scale, it doesn't get better than an IMAX screen. Like it doesn't. Like like if, if you've seen if you've only seen Dune from home, you're not gonna understand why people love it. And I feel like it's the same way here. If you miss out on this seeing it in theaters, you're not gonna understand the love of it. Like I see, you see, we see all these creators and everybody saying like, this needs to be seen on the big screen. We hear that all the time, right? And a lot of us think like, oh, it's just them selling the movie and they need to sell tickets, blah, 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 blah. But no. Certain stuff needs to be seen on the biggest screen imaginable. That being IMAX and Doom Part 2 is one of those. I love seeing the different color palette. I don't know what's going on with the black and white, but I wonder if that part is actually going to stay black and white. I don't know. I, I, the additions with the characters. I, I love what I'm seeing. I love that this... <coughs> you know, of course, this is going to be an aftermath to what happened, but it just seems like, you know... Florence Pugh's character is kind of playing like some sort of investigator, figuring out what happened. And keep in mind, I'm ignorant to Dune. I never read the books. Didn't even see the 80s version. Um, like I said, I'm novice to this house, so I'm just going off what I see. I don't know anything about Dune. But she seems like she's playing some type of like a uh, investigation uh, character, figuring out what happened to the house of the Atreides. And she poses the question, what if Paul is still alive? And I love how they transition to Paul now transitioning himself to be in a different place that he's never you know oh man he's just transitioning and, and, and just the concept of him still being alive I didn't know Josh Brolin's character was still alive you no know, don't show him die but just to see him show back up I wonder what's gonna how this is gonna play out because you know his character was so against them 
you know, I'm, not, I'm forgetting the name of what the Sand People's names are, but he was just so against them. So I wonder how he's going to feel when he runs into Paul, who's now adopted, who's been adopted by these set of people. So I'm like, are the heads going to clash there? What's the final act going to be? You know, that fight amongst the moon with the orange, beautiful lights just on display. The score hitting again. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> November 3rd. Can't come here quick enough. <sighs> this is looking like film of the year, personally. Like, I... Film of the year. Then he got another one. Then he got another one in his catalog. I don't know how this dude has been able to continuously craft these artsy blockbuster films that just, he's like the sci-fi god, like when it comes to doing this, like how you got Blade Runner doing one and two on the, like, now you even talk about this other film, like man, Arrival, man, man. I'm there day one. Let me know in the comments what you thought about the trailer. What are your expectations? Where you think it's going to fall on your list? I'm just, I'm kind of speechless. I'm just, man. If you like this kind of content, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you already are subscribed, thank you. Until next time, peace. Rap Nerd Productions, no capping, that's word to mommy.